Karen Lee here from our CBS4 studios with our continuing breaking news here on CBS4 and our streaming news service, CBSN Denver. Right now, uh, Aurora Police Chief Vanessa Wilson is getting ready to talk here about a shooting that happened in the school parking lot at Hinkley High School, where we know three students or three people were shot. Let's listen in. We did have an APS security officer heroically return fire and then also apply a tourniquet to one of the students that was hit. Uh, our SROs quickly responded, and I want to thank the men and women of the Aurora Police Department that, as you can see, responded here quickly and were able to uh, lock the school down and make sure that we had the students inside safely. I'm being told by APS that all students have been released now to their parents, um, so I want to thank you for that. I know you're going to ask me if this is related to our shooting on Monday. It is not confirmed at this moment it's a possibility and we will let you know as soon as we know however i don't want people to just make that assumption we are again looking at every angle of this i need the public's help uh, this there was a fight that started in this uh, parking lot and then it went into a shooting these are our kids that are shooting one another we have disrespect and no concern for life whatsoever i need the parents to get involved i need you checking phones i need you checking rooms i need you checking cars and make sure that they're taking these guns away from these kids i had multiple shooters on this scene as well uh, we cannot do it alone and i know as you are we are tired of this luckily none of these injuries were being told or life-threatening but again, the emotional scars, not only the people that were hit today, but the people that witnessed it are long, going to be lifelong. I have Superintendent Rico Munn here with me as well. He came out to show solidarity. Um, the schools, uh, once we have Rangeview School that is getting released within an hour, all APS schools will be on uh, Thanksgiving break next week. I think I've told you everything. I'll open it up for questions of what we have so far. Uh, there are no arrests at this time. I know there is a, a social media video that's circulating of a white pickup truck. We have that pickup truck, so thank you for that. However, I must ask that anyone that has tips, anyone that has video, if your kids have video, please do not so circulate it on social media. We need it either to the Aurora Police Department or best is Crime Stoppers. There will be an a reward for this as well. At this point, it's up to $2,000, um, and we'll try to increase that as, as we can. Go ahead. Yes. Well, I'm angry and I'm and I'm I want we need the people know what happened here. We need to talk to our kids. These beefs cannot continue. Okay? These are all stemming from fights is what the information that we have. And these kids have guns and they didn't get them they got them from somewhere. So we need to start checking our kids phones. You need to know who your friends are your kids are hanging out with and who their friends are and we need to check rooms and everything else to see if there are weapons that are involved here. I hate to just be that bluntly but I need I need the parents help in this. I can't give you that information ma'am again because we have um, we have victims as versus suspects we're not sure and we just don't want any issues. Not at this time. Again, we will continue to look at it, and then we'll also continue to see if this is linked to the Monday shooting. Were all of the people involved in this uh, students here? Uh, two, of the, two, of the, two of the people that have been shot are Hinkley students, and one is uh, APS Avenue student. Your, sir, I'm sorry. We have not recovered any weapons that I know of, um, but I, like I said, we do have the white pickup truck that people um, identified some witnesses that were here. So let's make, I want to make it clear, it was an APS security officer, it was not an APD officer, so therefore we will be handling this investigation, um, especially I'm leaving it to my major crimes unit that took the shooting on Monday to make sure if there's any linkages, uh, we have all that information. Um, but I do want to applaud um, his actions. Uh, he did a great job here today. Security officer, yes. I'm sorry? Uh, we have three people shot, and we think that possibly one of them may be one of our suspects. Again, we're still trying to sort out who's a victim and who's a suspect in this. Possibly, yes. Yes, so we have all week long, we have had an increased uh, presence at all the schools. Um, and so we will continue that. Obviously, next week we're out of school to give us a reprieve to try and get the people that are responsible for this in custody. 
Um, but again, I need all information. I, I beg the public to please send us the information. I know that we're getting threats. We've had threats to Gateway, threats to Rangeview. We've sent officers there. I want credible tips to come to us. Um, absolutely. Anything that you hear, we need to know about it. I'm sorry, what? Well, the officer was here very quickly and helped uh, the APS, and then, of course, officers had the school locked down within minutes. I know you mentioned these guns are coming from somewhere. Do we know where are they getting these guns? Is it black market? Is it online? Is it, do we have any idea where are these guns coming from? So I know that some social media platforms, is what I'm being told, some of these kids are able to go on and purchase weapons. So that's why I need parents to know what their kids are doing on their phones, and they need to know who they're hanging out with. Um, I'm not sure, ma'am, but we can follow up on that. I don't believe so. Um, there were threats circulating, circulating out on uh, social media that Granville and Range we were next, so we had officers respond. We do have video. We have surveillance video that we're going through. And please send us your video from your cell phones if you have it. Again, to Crime Stoppers or the Aurora Police Department. Uh, we have uh, partial uh, evidence. Yes. Yes, sir. Happened right back here. It's a very large area where the shooting. Uh, we had multiple shooters again. I can't release that yet, but we do have the pickup truck. Well. Um, obviously, we were all shaken by what happened on Monday. Uh, my detectives, major crime detectives and other de district detectives and officers have been working around the clock to solve that case. And then as we're driving to a, a peace march, we have another one. So um, I'm very frustrated. And I think everyone in this community should be very angry. And again, we love our kids, and, but we have to pay attention to what they're doing. We have multiple shooters. I can't give the exact number at this time. Anything else? Okay, thank you so much. So we'll uh, try to put a news release out a little bit later today to kind of uh, finalize some of this You have been listening there to Again, Aurora Police Chief early. Vanessa Wilson talk about the shooting that happened just a little while ago. This was at Hinkley High School. This was in the parking lot area there where you heard her say three people were hurt. Two people went to the were taken to the hospital. One of them drove themselves to the hospital. They're still trying to figure out if one of the uh, suspects was actually involved in that shooting. They did find a suspect vehicle. They have that in their possession right now. It is a white truck. Um, she didn't talk much more about that. She did say there were multiple shooters involved in this, so they are looking for more suspects. Um, she also made a plea to parents, to all school parents, that please look in your children's bags, cell phones, um, drawers in their, in their bedrooms. Find out if they have any guns, and if so, address that situation. She is angry and frustrated over the school shootings that have happened or shootings that have happened on school property. She did not say these two were linked to the one that happened on Monday, but they are looking into that. She did say a fight started in the parking lot and then shots were fired. Our Michael Abeda, of course, has been on scene covering this for us. And uh, Michael, I know you've been talking with parents and, and people out there about how frustrated and scared they are too. Yeah, Karen, frustrated and scared, those are the two key words. Of course, you know, nothing like this, when something like this happens, no parent wants to hear about it. And the first thing they care about is the health and safety of their kids. That's why parents always come down here to pick up their kids. But then when they, they get here, the second thing they think of often when they, they were saying is that this has become normal for their kids. Their kids have practiced things like this. One parent I talked to said that their 16-year-old was in class when it happened and immediately knew to get in into their active shooter protocol, which was getting under the desk, and then was able to text her. Of course, when their kids are being able to reunite with them, they are grateful. Some of the parents we talked to said, though, that something needs to change because this is becoming all too normal. It's a huge uh, relief because when you're hearing about uh, shooters, it, it can be quite scary because I don't want to normalize this. I don't want to make this seem. I saw some kids coming out with these strong smiles, and it's it hurts me because this is 
this is what it's come to, right? Kids are having to show up strong and say, hey, I got this, I'm strong, I'm going to overcome this, and it, it shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't have to normalize these issues. Now, of course, parents do need to send their kids to school. It's important for their future and for their education. But now some parents I talked to say that they are torn after shootings like this and the one that happened earlier this week. They're wondering if their kids are safe at school any longer. In Aurora, Michael Aveta covering Colorado first. Michael, they certainly have question to be concerned, that's for sure. Let's get over to our Karen Morfitt, who is out there at the scene as well. Karen, I know that you've been out there talking with students and parents as well, and um, I just can't imagine what's going through their minds. It's been a very difficult week for Aurora uh, School District. You're absolutely right, Karen. It's been a very difficult week for parents, and we've been here since about 2 o'clock when they started releasing those students to their parents at about 2 o'clock. Behind me, you can see Hinkley High School is just a few blocks away. They were putting students on buses and then moving them over here to East Middle School where parents were able to then reunite with their students. They've been doing this in phases, and so we're at a point where most of those students have been released from the school, and most parents have been reunited with their with their students, but we had a chance to talk with a number of families over here today as they were waiting to be reunited with their students, and all of them had the same message, much of what you heard there with Michael, but they're angry, they're emotional, and they say enough is enough right now. They're calling on city leaders who just coincidentally were having a peace rally today to discuss the violence in Aurora. They say it's time for them to start doing something. One mother told us when you look at the, the you know, the block away from the street, there's a liquor store, there's a gun store, and then there was a pot shop and they were concerned that there's just not enough resources for students in this area to, to to avoid those types of situations. Now, many of the students we spoke to with um, that were here at the school today say they were inside the shooting again happening in the parking lot. So they weren't even exactly sure what was going on. Many of them just told that they were on lockdown and that they were going to need to stay put until things could be cleared up outside. One grandmother says that she spoke to her granddaughters who were in hiding inside the school and that they were whispering to her, but she was just thankful that they were able to make contact and to uh, tell them that they were okay. But again, many of them calling on city leaders. I know the, the police chief there calling on parents, and it just seems like right now there's a lot of questions about what needs to be done we're going to have much more on this. We're going to hear more from families as well as students coming up tonight on CBS 4 News at 10. For now, we're live in Aurora. Karen Morfitt covering Colorado First. All right, Karen, thank you. That gunfire in the parking lot at Hinkley High happened about three miles from a shooting near Aurora Central High that we've been talking about that happened earlier this week. There, here's a map for you to show you how close these schools are. In a video sent to us from a parent of a student, you could hear a large number of shots being fired. Oh my God. No. No. No, no, no. Oh my God. Now, this all happened as community members were gathering for a peace rally to address Monday's shooting. That happened at Nome Park, which is right next to Aurora Central High School. A lot of questions, certainly, as we have the second shooting involving Aurora High Schools in a week. Today, three people hurt at Hinkley High School's parking lot there. Six Aurora Central students were shot Monday. State and city leaders say Colorado, all of us, must do more to address the problems of youth and gun violence. We certainly appreciate you being with us this afternoon. We will keep you updated on CBSDenver.com and CBSN Denver with complete coverage beginning on CBS4 News at 5.